Everyone says you should believe in yourself, but how do you actually believe in yourself when no one else does? In this video, I'm going to break it down into five simple steps you need to take to increase your self-belief starting today. Now, before we get into my step-by-step -step guide, let's talk about self-belief. What is it and why is it so important? Self-belief is all about having trust in your own abilities, ideas and judgment. It's what keeps you going when life gets tough. Think of it as your inner strength. The part of you that knows that no matter what happens, you're going to be okay. Which brings me to the first important thing you need to do if you want to start believing in yourself, even if no one else does, and that is to have a clear vision of who you want to become. If you don't believe in yourself right now, the easiest thing you can do is fall into the trap of thinking that this will always be the case. Here's a simple exercise you can try to come up with a clear vision of who you want to become. Journal using the following questions. 1. Where do I want to be in life in 5 years? Where do you want to live? What would you like to do? What kind of life do you imagine for yourself? 2. What is the most important goal for me for the next year? I want you to focus on one thing that you would like to achieve and write it down in as much detail as possible. 3. What is one habit that I can let go of that no longer serves me? Think of one unhealthy habit that might be keeping you stuck right now. What is the first step you can take to stop engaging in it? 4. What is one habit I can pick up that will help me achieve my goal? What is one habit that could potentially help you get to where you want to go? For example, waking up 30 minutes earlier, eating a salad once per day, working on your side hustle for an hour daily, etc. 5. Who do I need to become in order to get there? What would your future self do? How would they look, sound and act like? Describe the ideal version of yourself that you would like to become in a year. Now that you have a clear vision of who you want to become, you can move on to the next step, which is to identify your greatest strengths. Not believing in yourself often stems from focusing too much on your weaknesses and not spending enough time developing your strengths. For this exercise, I'm going to use five prompts from the Self-Love Toolkit, which is my proven step-by-step -step framework that will help you learn to love yourself unconditionally. If you want to learn more, click the first link in the description box below or head over to www.theselflovetoolkit.com. Now, I want you to journal using the following five questions. One, what are my top three strengths? We're talking about the traits that you like about yourself, what you're good at, what comes naturally to you, and what you enjoy doing the most. Two, how can I use these strengths more in my life, career, and relationships? How can you turn these strengths into opportunities? How have these strengths shown up in the past? Write down how these qualities have benefited you so far. For example, the quality of creativity has helped me blank. Three, what are my top three weaknesses? I want you to think of three character traits that you would like to work on. Now, it's important to note that the purpose of the journaling prompt is not to beat yourself up but to help you uncover things that you're currently being critical of so that you can work on them. 4. What can I learn from my weaknesses? How are your weaknesses helping you grow? Keep in mind that all weaknesses are subjective. Something that you consider that you're not good at or you see as a character flaw may be your greatest teacher. 5. How can I reframe each one of these weaknesses? How can you see these weaknesses in a different light? Can you describe them in a less critical way? Now let's get into the next step that will help you start believing in yourself. And that is to stop being so hard on yourself. You know that little voice on the back of your head that keeps saying mean things to you? That's your inner critic. It's the internalized voice of a parent, teacher or primary caretaker. It's not you. The problem is it took many years of critical upbringing, social conditioning and heartbreak to make you question your worth every step of the way. So now your job as an adult is to unlearn everything that no longer aligns with your truth and start believing in yourself again. So what is the first step you can take to stop being so hard on yourself? One of the easiest things you can do is start becoming aware of your thoughts throughout the day. If you notice that little voice saying things like, I'm not good enough, I don't deserve this, no one loves the real me. Try to detach yourself from these thoughts and question their validity. Here's what happens when you keep repeating a negative thought over and over again. It turns into a false self-belief. Then your body associates the thought with a certain emotion. For example, every time you think that something bad is going to happen, you're triggering your anxiety. And here's where it gets really interesting. When you feel that emotion, you start engaging in unhelpful behaviors to try and cope with the negative sensations you feel in your body. For example, you may start binging Netflix or scrolling on social media. So one of the most helpful journaling prompts is to write down the most repetitive negative thoughts and beliefs that you have about yourself. So you know exactly what's cluttering your mind and preventing you from being your best self. 
Which actually brings me to my next point, which is to push for progress, not perfection. Okay, so you've set this amazing goal. You're excited to start working on yourself, but somehow it still doesn't seem enough. You're overthinking, trying to get it right and keep postponing the most difficult tasks. Why is that? Because you're trying to get it perfect. And as a perfectionist in recovery, I can tell you one thing for sure. Perfectionism is a waste of your time. No one would actually care if you don't do things perfectly. It's all in your head. Push for progress, not perfection. Here are three journaling prompts that will help you move into action quickly and stop spending so much time trying to get it perfect. One, when I hear the word perfection, who is the first person that comes to my mind? Two, have I experienced severe criticism in my family? Three, what will happen if I don't do things perfectly? Four, does being a perfectionist make me a better person? Five, what does perfectionism give me? Six, what does it take away from me? Now, if you want to go more in depth on the topic of fear of being imperfect, make sure to watch this video after this one. I will leave a link to it in the description box below. The next step you need to take to start believing in yourself is to only take advice from people who are already where you want to be. Sometimes not believing in yourself has something to do with being surrounded by people who question your abilities. When your loved ones are not as supportive as you want them to be, it can be difficult to keep going. The thing is, they might have the best intentions to protect you, to keep you safe, but that doesn't mean they have any idea what they're talking about. So my tip here is to only take advice from people who already have what you want, who have been in your shoes and can actually help you. You can start by watching YouTube videos of people that are already where you want to be. Pay attention to the steps they took to get there. What mistakes have they made along the way that you can learn from? How can you apply the lessons they've learned to your own life? And what is one thing that you can take away from each video you watch? And here comes my bonus tip. Reward yourself for every small win. The way you can reinforce the amazing progress you've already done is to reward yourself after every small win. We often hear that punishing yourself for bad behavior is going to help us change. But the truth is that positive reinforcement is way more powerful and it will help you believe in yourself more because you're gonna have self-compassion. Punishment instills fear. Reward is associated with love and joy. By rewarding yourself, you're training your brain to associate doing the hard work and accomplishing things with something pleasurable. You're reinforcing the positive behavior and making it more enticing next time you're faced with the decision to do nothing or take action towards your goals. Now, believing in yourself is directly linked to learning how to validate yourself. So if you want to learn more on this topic, make sure to watch this video next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in that video.